Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for coming and apologies about like, you know, the problems and Windows license and everything. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is PHP 7, the wise and the house. Uh, this is, um, well, it gets a little bit technical, but um, I'm trying to, can, I'm basically trying to sell it PHP 7, so please try to buy it. Um, hello, um, my name is Ayesh Karuna Ratna. I'm from Sri Lanka. I work in mostly Drupal staff. And uh, so coming to history, PHP, uh, 5.6 was released back in 2006. <coughs> so most of us were probably kids back then, uh, 5.3, 2009, 12. And we have PHP 5.6. Uh, released in 2014, and right now uh, the PHP they don't really support new features, so you are stuck with PHP 5.6. You get um, like security features for some time, but um, not for real long. So you have to move to PHP 7. It was released 2015, so that's two years already, and we are having PHP 7.2 in one and a half months. So this presentation, I will try to cover some of the features that PHP 7.2 will have. So when you go home, you, are, you already know most of the things that PHP 7.2 will have. So it's a pretty, well. Uh, well, the question is, if it works with PHP 5.6 or whatever the PHP version you have, why do we really bother to upgrade, right? It works, it makes money, and the clients don't complain. But um, see, the thing with um, PHP is that it evolves really fast, and uh, new features come. Uh, there are some security fixes and everything, so you kind of have to move with uh, PHP, the newer versions. And uh, the other one is uh, this is from uh, WordPress. I know this is like DrupalCon, but we use WordPress because it's like terrible code. Um, if you can like the the third line and fourth line. Uh, that's like the entire test suite. It took 13 minutes run, and in PHP 7, it took just under six minutes. It's just on the same hardware, the same amount of RAM, so the same disk and everything, but it cut like the test time in half. So if you use PHP 7, uh, there's a very good chance that your code will run twice as fast or use twice as less memory. Uh, it, it, of course, it depends on like each application, but um, I use WordPress because that's like terrible code, and if you can get boost from this one, uh, Drupal is like an open, you can always get some pretty good advantages. And um, the next one is like, this is Drupal cone again, but uh, we kind of, we are always in like the PHP community. Uh, we just had Laravel 5.5 released um, about a couple of weeks ago. It requires PHP 7. And we have Symfony 4 coming up, uh, probably this year, probably next year. It also requires PHP 7. And Doctrine is an ORM. Um, it's like you manage database um, entities and everything with it. It requires, it requires PHP 7.1. And uh, we, actually, we have PHP Unit. It's um, a popular PHP testing framework. We used it in Drupal 8. And it also requires PHP 7 now, 7.0. And I'd like to encourage you that if you like uh, maintain any open source projects, just require PHP 7 because it's so much easier and uh, we'll see how you can actually upgrade your code to PHP 7. Um, so if you maintain any Drupal modules, um, uh, to your left is how you would use in Drupal 7. Um, in your module.info file, just put PHP equal 7.0, and um, Drupal will say, if you are running PHP 5.6, Drupal will say, hey, now you need PHP 7. So you don't have to check the, like, the version. You just put it in the module, uh, module info file, and then it would go. Uh, this is for Composer packages. I, Compo is, Composer is a PHP package manager. Um, you can require that uh, if you want to install this package, you have to use PHP 7, and no questions. The composer will make sure that the user has PHP 7. So we don't care about WordPress. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, for Drupal 7, uh, sorry, PHP 7, 
these are the, some of the, if you are not using PHP 5.6 right now, uh, these are some of the pages that you are, that you are already missing. Uh, so if you are here for the last session, uh, Michelle was um, contributing to Symfony. Uh, Symfony and most of the packages, they use namespaces, so it came with PHP 5.3, and you saw it, it came like years early, years early right? And closures, um, and there are some, several features uh, that I'm not going to talk about these ones because it's like 30 minutes and I wasted with the project like 15 minutes, and uh, these are pretty straightforward, straightforward features. Uh, try to um, like understand them. Uh, I would personally go for generators and uh, password hashing, the last two. Uh, and then uh, short, sin short array syntax, you probably know this. In instead of saying like array with uh, like brackets, you just put square brackets and it's just an array. Uh, so this is PHP 7, I like doggy memes. It looks good with the presentation. Okay, uh, this is the summary. Uh, PHP 7 now has uh, parameter types. Uh, so basically when you say, um, when you define a function and say you need an argument, um, you can, with PHP 7, you can say to PHP compiler that uh, we absolutely need a string or an array or some integer or oh, most of the scalar types, booleans, we have floats, we have, um, we used to have like uh, all class names and everything. And the second one is, uh, it's actually a pretty cool one. Um, with PHP 5.6, if you include um, a file with say some syntax error, you will get like fatal error, right? It's like in the white screen, uh, we used to have like white, white screen of dead, like funny names like that. Uh, five points, uh, sorry, page seven, um, you just wrap that uh, call with some try catch uh, phrase and you can actually catch that. Um, security improvements, we will go to that and asynchronous, well, we will go through everything. Uh, okay, so this is probably not really interesting one but this is most likely um, the best change we made in Drupal 7, so, uh, PHP 7, sorry. Uh, abstract syntax tree is uh, when PHP wants to compile something, um, it builds uh, the AST. Uh, so it decouples things from uh, like the interpreter and uh, the way the syntax is handled. Um, so it's easier to make uh, new, new changes in the syntax. Uh, that's why we have so many new changes coming uh, because PHP 7.0 was released in 2015 and we already have two more versions. That's one of the reasons why we have uh, faster releases. So if you update your code today, um, you can kind of um, like keep up with the changes. And uh, nowadays these changes actually come really fast. So uh, try to catch up and you can, uh, there are just a few changes you have to make. Uh, to make them 7.3 compatible, 7.4, or any version that comes after. Um, okay, this is just an example of one of the features I have. Uh, Null coils, uh, I hope you can see the screen, right? Okay. Uh, so earlier, um, if you're using anything like a condition, uh, you had to use like a eset uh, call to see if the, like, the uh, variable is set. Uh, but uh, the one in the bottom is PHP 7 syntax. Uh, you just put two question marks and then uh, set the default value. So uh, if you want to get a variable and if you want to check that if it's already available, it's like it's already set. Um, you just put two question, mark, question marks and then set the default value. Uh, if the variable is available, PHP will put um, the variable to the left and if it's not available, uh, it will use the variable to the right. Uh, so after this part, uh, we will um, try to break the new features to sigma segments. Uh, the first one is, uh, again, uh, Michelle last time said that um, PG 7.1 has uh, cool new features with uh, types. Um, so PHP is becoming more or less like Java nowadays because um, we try to uh, enforce strict types. 
Um, if we say, if you're going to return a string, by good, we have to return a string. So um, the first one is scalar type hints. Um, scalar variables are uh, variables that are not uh, like part of a class, but uh, strings, integers, boolean, double, and well, uh, you can see from the example, this is just like a really dumb function. Uh, see the int from uh, like the highlighted in blue. So for this function, uh, when you call this function, you always have to pass an integer. If you try to call it as increase volume with bool, PHA will throw an error. Um, with PHP 5.5 or 5.6 or any 5x version, um, you have to check that uh, the variable is actually a, an integer, like is number or any like function call you have. Uh, with PHP 7, uh, you, you can reduce most of the boilerplate code. You just put int, and PHP will take care to validate the variable type. And uh, part of the exceptions, I, I have uh, some slides coming up for that. Um, you can catch them. So if you don't catch them, it, this would be like a fatal error. You will see like white screen. But you can actually try catch them. So uh, not too much to worry about. And then we have uh, return types. It's like uh, when you call get score uh, without this integer, uh, there's no guarantee that it will always return an integer. So uh, it's PHP 7. There's new syntax that you can enforce that this function will return an integer. This is like a contract. So if you put integer, you have to return an integer. So uh, in this case, we return just 110. Uh, but if you try to return, say, uh, not available or false or anything that's not an integer, you will get an error. Uh, the reason this is good is um, you don't have to write specific test because this is like a test itself. Um, when you call this, um, one thing is uh, whoever is calling, they know that uh, you will definitely get an integer. And um, you can also enforce this one if you use, uh, like in a class. Uh, all, like every child class that extends this method, they have to return an integer. So it's easier to build like interfaces. So um, if you have like, uh, say, something that uh, others can extend, uh, you can make sure that they will always return an integer. And um, if they don't, uh, you can easily see uh, the function itself, itself will say uh, this function is supposed to return an integer, but you return uh, this type, a string or null or something. So um, it's really easy to debug. Uh, now, uh, with 7.1, now, by the way, uh, check the title. Uh, this one in scalar type hints. If there is no specific PHP version, that came with PHP 7.0. So, uh, like, this one, uh, it came with 7.1, so try to pay attention to the title as well. Uh, this one is like uh, get score. Uh, with get score, uh, with int, we say that uh, we definitely return an integer. But this one, we say we will never return anything. Void is like we don't return anything. Um, so uh, I have put some notes there. Uh, you can't return anything other than uh, an integer. Sorry, you can't return anything at all. Uh, but uh, PHP 7.1 also has uh, a nullable return type. Uh, so in this case, we allow integers and null. But you always have to return something. It's 110, uh, like it's an integer. You return null. Um, there's no problems here. But if you try to return a string, a string or float, boolean, anything else, you will get an error. And again, this works with um, methods as well, like class methods as well, not just functions. Uh, on uh, this, when you want to mark that uh, return type is uh, nullable, it, nullable as in it can be null, uh, you just put like a question mark in front of uh, the scalar type. You can use int or class names as well. Uh, class names as in if you have like a std class or anything that any, any object or from any class, so you can just put question mark. So you will return um, an integer. 
sorry, uh, of any variable of that type or nothing at all. Um, uh, it's similar to uh, you know, function arguments as well. Um, so in this case, uh, see the one in red color. Um, now, usually we have uh, like default value set like um, a function increase volume increment equal null or some default value, but if you don't give um, a default value like this, uh, it will always be um, integer or null. Yeah, you can see that the second example, you explicitly have to pass null. If you don't pass null, it will still throw an error. Uh, uh, iterable is something, anything that you can use in for each. Uh, now, usually when we call for each, it's usually an error, right? Uh, but there are some new types, uh, traversable that, uh, and generators that you can uh, traverse. Like, uh, you can take one value, <laughs> this for each is wrong, don't follow that. Uh, you can just take a variable and then uh, iterate through each variable, each uh, key of these values. Uh, so earlier you, you had to check that uh, it's an array, but uh, technically arrays are not the only ones that you can iterate. So uh, this iterable type uh, came with PHP 7.1. And uh, 7.2, it's not released yet, but uh, with 7.2, you can make sure that every variable you pass is an object. Um, not, it doesn't has to be a steady class, or it has to be just any object from any class. Um, so exceptions. Uh, in early examples, if you try to violate, violate any of these contracts, I say these are contracts, because uh, if you declare, declare that uh, this function takes an integer, you have to do that. If you don't, uh, you will get exceptions, not errors. If you don't catch an exception, uh, well, you actually have some error, but exceptions are uh, PHPs or any programming language's way of saying uh, things are not happening the way they are meant to be. So um, with PHP 5.6, uh, the exceptions we had like really sucked because we had like three or four exceptions and you had to cover everything. Uh, but with this one, a PHP 7, we now have an um, interface called throwable. So every exception is uh, part of uh, like child class of throwable. So um, if you tr try to catch a throwable, it means almost every error, you can catch almost everything. Uh, Uh, one in the last one, pass error and type error. Uh, type errors are occurred when, uh, when you violate the contract. Like if you have a function that says it should uh, throw, it should return an integer, and if it doesn't return an integer, that's a type error. Uh, if you say a function should take an integer, and if you try to pass, say, a string, a boolean, that's a type error. So uh, you can catch them with type error. Pass error is, well, basically syntax errors. If you have uh, a function with some invalid PHP, PHP will throw an exception of type parse error, not fatal error, so you can easily like uh, catch them. Uh, this is, just don't worry about it. This is like a new hierarchy. Uh, uh, the exceptions to your left is uh, the ones that PHP itself would throw. You can see uh, the same ones, parse error and type error. And to your right is uh, some of the functions that uh, you can throw. Uh, now, when you want to make your code like really easy to read, uh, if the code is actually a runtime exception, it means uh, there is something going south with the runtime. Just pass uh, a runtime exception. But uh, you can see where I'm going this. Uh, try to pass uh, the most logical exception. Uh, there are multiple exceptions. You can uh, check them on php.net. Uh, this is like 30 minutes, so I didn't include everything. Uh, again, this is about exceptions. Uh, with PHP 7.1, you can catch multiple exceptions. Uh, okay, I, I suck at spelling as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Now, it's PHP 7.1. If you have uh, like catch calls, like from the line three, you, have, you can see like there's a catch phrase. So you're trying to catch any exception, but if you do the same thing for all exceptions, you can uh, try to catch everything and execute them at once. So um, in this case, uh, we try to execute this function, something nasty, and if there's an exception of type PDO exception or foo exception, it's not written there, but PDO foo exception, um, PHP will execute um, the part in the middle for both of these exceptions. Uh, you can go with like 10 exceptions, but don't really do that because it makes your code really hard to read. Um, okay, so that's with exceptions. Uh, this part is, uh, it can get kind of technical because uh, with Drupal, we, now to be honest, uh, Drupal community, we really suck at object oriented programming. Um, because with PHP 5.2, we had like everything was a function, and PHP 8, now we have like tons of classes, and not everyone's happy. We even have like forks starting. Um, but uh, these are the, just the improvements you can use. If you use object oriented programming, you can use some of these uh, improvements. Uh, first one is anonymous classes. Uh, now, I need honest answer. Who here is uh, writing tests, unit tests, integration tests, anything? Okay, that's really sad. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, well, you should write tests, and if you don't, you should feel bad about yourself. Uh, okay, uh, tests are the way to um, make sure that your code runs the way it's supposed to be without testing them manually. It's like, it takes like tons of time if you want to like go to page, poke some button and see if the output is the same. You can just code that and run it, run it at once. Like uh, in the first few slides, uh, you saw like a screenshot from WordPress. Even WordPress have a, like unit tests. I'm putting WordPress to like the, the least level, they even have unit tests, so you should too. Um, with unit tests, uh, there's one concept that we create like a mockup. It's like uh, something that behaves like the class, but it's not the class itself. So anonymous classes help you to quickly create a class that works like it. Um, so you can see from the example uh, for new class, it can extend existing classes and implement interfaces. Um, they can already exist, or they could be like anonymous classes as well. So um, you can quickly create new classes. Uh, but I have never seen like any use case outside uh, tests. So if you don't use tests, uh, this slide isn't really for you. Um, class constraints. Um, for, for classes, we, ha we have these um, <coughs> constraints, right? You can never change them, and they are really easy because uh, the class contains like all the constraints and everything. But sometimes uh, there are constraints that we don't really want to expose to outside people. It's like if you use a constraint within your class, um, you can now with PHP 7.1, um, you can say uh, this constraint is private, and private means only your class can access it. And we also have uh, protected methods, and public is like the default. So, well, we usually don't put public. Um, so, if you want to make like a constant only accessible to your class, use private. If you want to make a constant that's accessible to your class or any classes extending it, we can use protected. So, it's it's similar to uh, the the same way you will use uh, class properties and class methods. So, it's like kind of consistent with that. Uh, with PHP 7.2, it's not released yet, but uh, you can probably see the difference. Uh, this class four has a method called set ID, and it requires an integer. Um, but we have another class called bar. Uh, it also extends four, but um, with, without PHP 7.2, if you do this, you will get an error because these uh, methods they are not really compatible. Like set ID is int ID, but um, in bar, it's not 
int ID is just ID. So with PHP 7.2, you can just remove this integer and use any class there. So uh, it makes it easier to extend the classes and uh, kind of violate the contract you have with the base class. Uh, and the security, I like this part. Um, now, in, with Drupal, we had a function called uh, Drupal Random Bytes. It's like uh, like 30 lines of code. Uh, it tries to see if uh, OpenSSL is available, and if it's available, it tries to get some really random numbers. Uh, with this one, you can easily take random int, and uh, it's guaranteed to be like really random. Uh, now, PHP already has like a rand function. Uh, it says random, but it's not really random because if you take like like a million rand calls, it kind of tend to be uh, biased towards something. But uh, random mint is uh, more, well more or less guaranteed to be uh, secure. And then uh, we have a, like a terrible function called unserialize. Uh, we, we shouldn't be using it, but people use it anyway. So PHP 7 now has a feature to uh, disable loading classes. Now, unserialize, uh, you can throw any string, and if it validates, PHP will uh, create new classes uh, using that data. But it's kind of dangerous because now, if you try to instantiate, uh, say, a class that's destroying something, uh, it will execute anyway. So with this one, you can say uh, unserialize function that uh, no, no, we don't really need any classes there. So it will never try to instantiate any classes. Uh, OK, this is like terrible part. Uh, we have MySQL extension gone. MySQL is not PDO. MySQL is the one that you, like when, like a few years ago, we used to have like MySQL underscore connect and all functions. They are gone. Like not deprecated, they are really gone. And we have uh, encrypt is uh, a class, uh, sorry, uh, extension that you use to encrypt files and numbers and everything. Uh, it wasn't really maintained for a few years, so we threw that out. Not not I did, but someone else did. Uh, Ereg is uh, it's also an older one. We have replaced it uh, Perl regular expressions, and there are two uh, functions. I don't think you have ever used them. So they are gone, but you actually have some uh, replacements as well. Uh, deprecations, they are uh, mostly PHP 7.2. Uh, so uh, with Drupal 7, uh, we had some count, uh, the third one, uh, some count calls, but they're uh, nowadays gone. So um, well, try to don't use them, because uh, for everything, um, if you try to access a variable without the dollar sign, that basically means um, PHP used to try and see if there's a variable with the same name, but um, it's 7.2, it will throw an error because it's an error anyway, so it might as well throw an error. Uh, auto load is used to be uh, one way to load uh, classes when necessary, but uh, we have SPL auto loaders, composer, well, most of these functions are like really old, and we should feel bad about throwing them out. And we have two more. Uh, sorry, this is called uh, uniform variable syntax. This is actually for Drupal people. This is one of the, the places that we had most errors. Um, when you try to access something from a variable, um, you can say that um, it goes like deep inside. Uh, we take the variable from foo and then go inside bar and then try to take buzz. Um, now, uh, before this uniform variable syntax, uh, PHP would in try, to uh, try to get uh, the variable from bar and the key of buzz, the second one and the third one. Uh, but with PHP 7, it will try to first take a foo and then uh, get the bar variable inside. And then uh, you can see there's this, where this is going. It's always from left to right. So uh, PHP will interpret the, whatever the variable is to your left, and then you will try to um, continue like this. Um, this one is uh, if you if you don't use any uh, like PHP with command line, uh, this doesn't this wouldn't make any sense. But um, if you use like uh, 
Trash or Drupal console or Composer. Uh, they are like CLI tools. So now, when you want to like cancel something, we would just press Control C, right? Um, with this one, you can uh, try to catch them. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, the one to your in, in red is that uh, called takes. Uh, well, uh, before this feature, uh, we had to tell PHP that uh, for every second, see if there's any input from the user, and if there's one, just please tell us. Uh, with PHP 7, sorry, 7.1, uh, we have this feature called uh, asynchronous sy signals. So we just tell PHP that if there's a signal, just tell us, just tell me. But we don't tell them when to check them. So they don't check every second. But if there's an input, it will just let us know. It, it, it actually gets like um, really cool. If you use any CLI tools, you can actually see like quite a lot of uh, performance changes. Uh, okay, Dunker is apparently how you say thanks in German, you probably know. Uh, then the next one is any questions? Uh, do you have any, if you have any questions? Okay, we don't have any questions, that's... Uh, he just asked, uh, have I tried upgrading a Drupal site? Uh, Drupal 7 is actually, 7.56 is 100% compatible with PHP 7. So if you have like a Drupal site, just upgrade to PHP 7.56 and it should work. And Drupal 8 is already compatible. It used to be like some long time ago. Uh, but don't try with 7.2. There are some problems with 7.2, like a few warnings, but um, it should work pretty good. And WordPress, please don't use WordPress, but if you do use WordPress, <laughs> uh, 4.9 should work well with uh, 7.2. So any other questions? Sorry? I think some FTP server, not really sure. Okay. Okay, no questions. Okay, and uh, well, uh, there's some sprints to go. Uh, Amanda said me I should put this slide, so I don't really know. And uh, please spread the session. Uh, if you have any something like suggestions, like if the session was terrible, don't create it. <laughs> so, so, uh, so there's that. Uh, if you have any like questions about if you have like any troubles upgrading any like module, any plugin or something. Uh, I'm here all day, um, so just try to come and see me. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Thanks so much for your. <laughs> Thank you.